Everybody off. This off. way, Jasper, this way. This way, Mom. Welcome back to the property. Uh, it's warmed up quite a bit for us uh, in the last week or so. So we're only sitting at about minus five degrees today, minus four maybe, but it's uh, pretty nice compared to the uh, minus 40 uh, temperatures we've had in the last little while. So it's time to get some work done up here. Uh, my big focus is trying to get those timbers down out of the beaver pond uh, to start building our timbers uh, framing for the sauna. So the cordwood sauna is the big project that I want to get moving on and I need timbers out of the uh, back 40 there down by the beaver pond in order to do that. First things first, we need to get them out of there and the trail is fairly tight and uh, the terrain is pretty rugged to get out in there uh, with a big sled. There's a number of tools I've got in my mind that I know we're gonna have to build in order to build the sauna. And one of those tools we're gonna start today um, is a Comatec. And a Comatec is a uh, Inuit type sled, uh, traditionally an Inuit sled uh, used for hauling really heavy stuff. And the design of a Comatec is such that it uh, lashes all of the uh, um, a decking to it with rope and so allows it to flex and a lot of other things. So anyway, that's what we're going to start working on today because we're going to have to get those big logs off the beaver pond through a very narrow trail and I think the Comatec might be the thing to do it. The rest of our sleds are uh, either too big and heavy or too delicate uh, to take logs and so uh, we're going to need another type of sled in order to hook behind the uh, snowmobile and, and get the uh, logs out of there. So that's what we're starting today. Uh, come along and we're going to build ourselves a Comatec. You know where Elliot is wherever, oh there I see them, way out there on the beaver pond. Now the main uh, feature on these, uh, aside from the curved ends, uh, so that it rides on the snow, is the angle at which you cut the top and bottom. And you, what you do is you put about a 7 degree angle on them when you cut them, so that the ski actually sits that way, just slightly. And so what ends up happening, once you've got your sleigh together, is the skis splay out just slightly that way and that allows it to take a much bigger load apparently and allows for some flexibility without those skis folding up under it apparently. So I've done that and uh, we'll try and uh, put that together that way. The other thing you do typically do is uh, when you cut off the nose shape you save that piece that got cut off and uh, round off the tip and then that goes on top just like that. work pretty quick with this stuff. Wood glue so that it doesn't freeze while I'm trying to do this. Try and pre-drill some holes. Get a screw in. So the cross pieces for this are basically, uh, I'm just using some 1x4 and uh, you cut little notches like that out of it. 
so that you can tie around them around the skis. So that'll be the inside of the ski dimensions, which I've made about 24 inches for the inside, and then a couple of inches past that. So they're about 20, 28 inches all the way across, 29 maybe, and uh, about 24 inches on the inside. So that should work good. Now the first one and the, and the last one on the skis get tied slightly differently. So let's have a look at how we're tying these on. Okay, so for the first and uh, last one, you drill holes on either side of the board. And for each remaining one, you drill a hole in the middle underneath it and they all tie together that way. But for the first and last board, they tie a little bit differently. So first things first, put her through. Now this is just 3 8 um, nylon rope, oh, nothing special. I think I got it on sale for three bucks for a hundred feet or something. And you just wind through a few times. Now it's not important you get it super tight just yet. But you want to make sure you feed enough through that you can go around three times. Okay, so three times through, just like that. So in the end I've got left, I'm just going to put a loop in that end. Okay, so tie a loop in that end. Just like that. Okay, tighten that down. And now you want to start tightening these up so that this loop is just outside that hole like that. Okay, so start tightening all the ropes up. And this is the part where you want to get them good and tight. Okay, so now you should have those all tightened up nice and tight. And you can go ahead and feed it through your loop that you've created like that. Making sure you keep it nice and tight. And then pull back on that. Getting that as tight as you can. From there, what you want to do is lift these strings up and try and feed that through without losing any of your tension. Feed that string through underneath. And it should be difficult because it should already be pretty tight. Once you've fed it underneath, and tighten it up and wrap that a couple times. It says three or four different times from the instructions that I'm using. Okay, and once you've gone around three times, this is my third now, when you get that loop, you can feed that back up through that loop and then tie it off, just like that. I'm going to go one more and just do a half hitch kind of a shoe knot just to tie it off. And that should be it. So as I say, the front uh, board and the back board need to be tied this way. And then the middle boards are actually have the same piece of string feed through all the way through all of them. So let me get that back board on and then we'll start working on the center boards uh, and I'll show you the tying for those as well. Okay, I'm gonna attempt to uh, explain the tying of the uh, uh, cross pieces. I got my cheat sheet here. I'll put these uh, plans that I found online. These are uh, a set of plans for a Comatic that uh, uh, the government of Nunavut put out uh, at some point. So I figured they'd be pretty authentic. So I'll show you what we're doing here. We're trying to lash these middle pieces along here. And so the first thing you want to do is uh, create a little loop like so, and just feed that through your hole. Okay, so now you have your leading end and your follow and your lead, okay? And uh, 
So now I want to twist that once over and then what I want to do is make my loop on the inside. So I make a loop on my inside like so and then with that loop I'm going to make a loop and a loop and so now I've got my two loops like this. Okay. And I've twisted and I've got my loops like that, right? So now what I'll do is when I put my board through, I'm going to put the through the loop on the inside and on the outside, just like that. Okay. And now what I want is to tighten that loop that's coming from this board. I want to tighten that as hard as I can and then come through my come through my board there. And then pull that through and pull that tight. These ones you want to get as tight as you possibly can at this stage because so now maybe what you can see if I dip under here is that and you can see the final tightening of it goes through like this and you can see it actually comes through underneath this guy which is already tight from there and by putting it under there it basically locks itself down right there like that okay and then that becomes our next loop to go to the next hole which is there okay so make a loop feed it through okay we put a twist on the outside like that and then we make our loop on the inside like this and then turn the whole thing one more turn like so and now I've got a loop there and there Okay, that's what my board's going to go through. So now I'm going to put my board through both of those. Like so. And I'm going to pull that first one as tight as I can from the other side. That's going to come up here. Get pulled tight. And on the inside, we're going to come through again. Uh, this guy. Uh, got an extra loop in there. That's gonna get pulled tight. And this one's gonna get pulled tight. And then finally, this guy. And tightened up just like that. Okay, so we got her all tied on uh, just in time. Actually, the rain is coming down pretty good all of a sudden down here. But there is our Comatuck all tied up, ready to go as far as the lashing goes. As I say, this is a fairly short Comatuck compared to uh, some of them that I've seen. But for our purposes of just laying a uh, log down on top of it and lashing it down and being able to drag it out, uh, it's really just trying to get that front end of it up and be able to sustain some of the weight and thrashing that it's going to take. So we'll give that a go. I got to put this uh, some metal on the bottom yet and uh, pull rope through it. Ideally, we would use something like a puck board or something on the bottom of these that's actually wider than the skis. This metal's just a little bit narrower than it, but it's what I had on hand and 
It'll help it from getting bashed up by rocks and things like that. When if I hit rocks or logs or something, it'll and help. And it'll help it slide. And it'll help it slide too. It should, yep. Yeah. I guess so. Okay, so now we need to put a couple of big holes in here uh, in the bottom parts of the runners, uh, not the glued on parts, obviously, uh, to pull uh, for the pull rope. So I didn't bring uh, my spade bits that I did these other holes with, with the electric drill, but I do have these old auger bits here. And a bit and brace, so we'll do it the old-fashioned way. And this never runs out of battery. That's right. Usually twice it holds better. Twice it holds better, especially yeah. in a big hole like that? Yeah. Good thinking. Let's do it twice. And whenever I do two on, on it, yeah. on my bag, I can never get it open again. Perfect. All right, let's see how she pulls. <laughs> You're okay too, Caramel. That's a little slushy. Oh, that was a little scary. <laughs> yeah, that's sketchy. <laughs> and all of a sudden... I wouldn't have expected that. Well, pulls through that trail quite nicely. Seems to follow really well, so I think that's gonna work. Uh, hopefully that'll hold the uh, front half of a big tree fairly well and be able to let us skid it out of there a little bit easier. Uh, we'll have to see. I really, I don't know what to expect with uh, this. It's, uh, I've never done a lot of skidding of big stuff with snowmobiles and off ice and whatever else. The slush on the uh, beaver pond is a little disconcerting. So we're gonna have to be real careful uh, choosing where we go out there. But uh, yeah, should be good. Uh, glad to have the sled done anyway, so there you have it. 